Back in 2018, the culture war and political content was on the rise. And many of the personalities that we know today were gaining a lot of popularity during this time. And I started to lose myself in that discourse. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the story of A Drink With Crazy. I created this channel in 2018 and after almost six years, I realized something. I've made some major mistakes with it. And this video here is the start of the correction. So if you guys are watching right now, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel for me to see if I can actually make that correction for you guys, the viewer, for me, the content creator, and overall for the future of what I'm hoping to do. Back in 2018, I had this idea of starting a political talk show so that way I could get involved in the conversation. So many people were at the time and this was something really important to me. So I reached out to my buddy Matt and I said, hey, do you wanna be my co-host? He's like, yeah, let's do it. From there, I went forward trying to find a whole bunch of stuff to put a set together and this is what it looked like. Yeah, that's what we looked like. Also, yes, that was my idea. I didn't realize how cringe it was and I do regret it. However, one thing became very clear. After we would get done with the show and talking about the politics of the week, we would go up to my garage and we would start talking about all of this stuff in entertainment that we loved. Dragon Ball Z, Star Wars, books, various different YouTubers, and honestly, we had so much more fun with that. Well, as time went on, I started to realize that keeping up with all of the politics of the week, having to research it myself, finding those dark stories, really takes its toll on you. Turns out, making political content is different than listening to political content. Honestly, I don't know how political commentators aren't in the wacko shack right now. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But when I started to realize that it was really affecting me, and I started seeing the world as this really dark place, I told my buddy Matt, I said, dude, I don't know if I really wanna do this anymore. This is a lot to take in, and it's really affecting me and my ability to get through the day. Well, Matt agreed, and we stopped producing content on the channel. So A Drink With Crazy sat dormant for quite a while, and life got busy. I was working actually on another channel, my original channel that I had, that I really loved, and it was just for entertainment purposes. But I didn't like the fact that A Drink With Crazy was just sitting there doing nothing for either of us. And so I went back to Matt and I said, hey, why don't we do this? We always have fun talking about pop culture and the things that we love about it. Why don't we just turn the camera on and start talking about that instead? And instead of doing live streams, we'll do videos, 20 minute conversations where you and I talk about the things that we love. And through that, we actually did like over 50 episodes. One of my favorite conversations was the Master Chief and Cortana conversation, talking about how they could possibly be an allegory to what it is to be a human and how Master Chief was a body without a soul and Cortana was a soul without a body. That conversation really sprouted an inspiration in me to want to continue things like that. And then things changed yet again. In 2020, Matt ended up changing careers and his schedule and my schedule no longer meshed together. And that really, really, really pumped the brakes. Although we had ideas to continue having conversations, we never had the time to get together. And then one more important thing happened at the end of that year. And that was my wife and I deciding it was time for us to make a change in our lives. And so we packed up everything we had and we moved, taking our kids to a better place and ultimately finding a new life for ourselves in a new location. Well, this meant that I had to change jobs and that meant that I had to be on the road for a while. I was no longer living at home. I was living out in hotels and I didn't have time to produce any sort of content or to even really think about any of this stuff. But after a while, I finally got work close to home, which was nice. So I was able to be home again. And that meant that that creative thing inside of me that wanted to keep doing a drink with crazy started to spark up again. So I talked to my wife I said, hey, I wanna start doing YouTube again. Are you cool with it? She was cool with it. And then I called my buddies, my buddies, Matt and Bill. Oh, by the way, Bill, he was the unsung third member of A Drink With Crazy. He actually helped set up our Twitch channel, taught us how to use OBS, laughed at us when we didn't know how to set any of it up, 
and ultimately helped edit some videos of ours and really showed us what we needed to learn in order to continue this. So I called Matt and Bill and I said, hey guys, I wanna do a Drink With Crazy again, but I, we all live in three different states and I know that our schedules don't line up. So do you guys care if I take the reins and I just go for it myself? Now, seeing as how a Drink With Crazy was more my passion than theirs, they were totally fine with it. They're like, yeah, dude, that's your thing. You go for it. We were in that with you because you asked us to be in it and we hope to see what you're able to accomplish. So all of that out of the way, what was I going to do on a drink with crazy? In July of 2022, Eric July releases the Ripperverse and he makes millions of dollars in like 30 hours. It was insane. The excitement was awesome. The hype was real and people were talking about it and I was inspired. So I got home on a Thursday afternoon. I sat down in front of the computer. I turned on the camera and I asked, what was the point? So for those out there wondering, why does this matter? Why does this small comic book matter? This rip a verse And it turns out a lot of people really liked that. All of a sudden, I woke up the next morning, my subscriber count was going up, my views were climbing, and all the way through the weekend, I could not believe how this video that I did was gathering people here, and it was exciting. What was I going to do now? How was I going to proceed? So, I started doing more topics about the Ripperverse, covering the characters. I started talking about the Iron Age when that term was coined, the creation of what was happening around us in the indie sphere. And then I started covering some of the news topics again and then trying to chase the daily news again and again. And it was constantly me reacting to the news of the week. And I realized that that's not something that I wanted to do because I stopped doing that years ago. Although it wasn't all bad. I actually had an audience that I could talk with now. I started reading their comments and I turned that into a pre-recorded Sunday segment. And then that turned into my live stream that I do every single Sunday. So that if you guys comment down below, you should tune into because I read those comments. And I got to interact with my audience because I, I had an audience now. I also found a passion and a love for sharing and shouting out indie creators, which turned into two different live streams. My Comic Shop Wednesday, where myself and my supporters get on and we give our first impressions to some of the coolest things out there in the indie world. And then Iron Age Nights, the show where we get to have an interview with some awesome creators. This actually led me to meet Shad M. Brooks from Shadiversity. And I even got to be on his Night's Watch channel a few times. He is the largest creator in the Iron Age sphere. We have a drink with crazy, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dad, for having me on. And I, I also got to talk with Literature Devil, a channel that I'd followed for years and made a total jerk out of myself on that video. And I'm drunk. I'm coming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's that's channel lore for another time. We also got to meet so many other creators and ultimately the live streams were doing well, the community was coming together, but something wasn't quite working for me, especially as we entered 2023. In 2022, the channel grew 1500 subscribers that year. I couldn't believe it. My, my jaw hit the ground, but YouTube made a major change and they basically said in 2023, you've got to do shorts. Well, if you guys have ever been on this channel, you know, I'm not a shorts guy. I don't like short content. I like the stuff that can make you think, the stuff that can take you on a journey and the stuff that ultimately dives deep into subjects that we all know and love. So throughout 2023, my videos struggled, getting little to no views a lot of times, causing me to wonder what I was doing wrong causing me to wonder if YouTube was going to be something that was going to last. But I didn't give up. And ultimately, that's why I'm here today. Because even though 2023 was a rough year, and the beginning of 2024 was a rough year, I started to realize something. Doing all these videos that I've done, having all these conversations with you guys that I've done, and wondering, 
what's going on with YouTube, I started to ask myself, why aren't people showing up, watching like they did in the past, when all of a sudden the channel was growing and growing? And the answer that I came to was, well, I'm actually not providing you guys, the viewer, value. And that is why this video exists today. What do you mean by that, Royce? Why do you, what do you say we don't provide value? We watch your live streams, we come here. Yes, you guys do. And I know that there's a lot of you that are dedicated to the show. You guys show up all the time, but there are also 2,600 people on this channel and most of them haven't wanted to come back. And I realized the problem was, is I was trying to do something that somebody else does really good. I was trying to chase the guys who do the news reads and they have the audience for that and people wanna to go to them for the news reads. And I was trying to compete at something that wasn't really my thing. And I realized that I didn't give you guys a reason to come here and hang out with me every week. I didn't give you guys that thing that was explicitly a drink with crazy. And so this leads me to the conclusion. This leads me to my promise to you as the viewer and to me as the content creator. I'm not gonna chase after the news anymore and I'm not gonna chase after doing content that so many other people can do and other people have the time to do. It's really hard as an up and comer on YouTube to grab all those news videos and release them when I'm at work for 11 hours a day. But you know what's gonna be even harder? Is developing my own style and doing something that I feel is worth my time and yours. So ladies and gentlemen, whether you're new to the channel or you've been here for a while, I promise you from this day forward, I'm gonna take my time and your time much more seriously. And on top of that, we're gonna have some fun talking about some great topics. You know, the dark truth about Power World. That's one of those videos coming up. The Helldivers are actually evil. And are you guys into anime? Well, Shangri-La Frontier has some really cool gamer headsets. And we're gonna dive into how close we are as a society to getting things like that. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are here for it, I'm here for you. And let's go on this journey together and let's have some fun. So as always, until next time, cheers everybody. Do, do you want to hit the record button? <laughs> I'm not used to it. No, you're good.